CIC board meeting to order. Uh, just a reminder, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, Wendy, I want to thank you for your uh, facilitation and having us be able to re work remotely and access this meeting venue. Uh, so with that, I just want to do a roll call vote. Uh, Annalise Scholar. Present. Tanny Staffinson. Present. Ken Anderton, is he in the room? I just joined present. Excellent. Thanks, Ken. And Tom Hansel is present. So we have all of our SDIC board members present. Uh, let's see. Welcome, Colin. Uh, you're going to provide an update on the Business Oregon grant. Yes, thanks for having me, Colin Rowan. Uh, Director of Planning Public Affairs, going to give a brief update on the Business Oregon grants uh, to support the drainage districts as the non-federal sponsor in uh, the next phase of the Portland Metro Levy Study project. So just a quick reminder of where we are. Uh, in August of last year, 2021, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers approved our feasibility study um, through a chief's report, which basically said that there was federal interest in reinvesting in our levy system. Um, after that uh, feasibility phase, the next phase of the PMLS project is the pre-construction engineering design phase. So this is a three and a half year design phase. Uh, the drainage districts as the non-federal sponsors um, when that is uh, approved, would be signing a three and a half year agreement to do the design work. Um, and the Business Oregon, the Oregon Business Development Department, uh, has a levy grant fund, uh, which the drainage districts has been a, have been a part of uh, advocating for in Salem and the legislature and shifting it from a loan program into a grant program. Um, and at the direction of the four drainage district boards, uh, staff applied for uh, grant funds uh, first year that they're available. Um, on August 8th, you received an email that the Infrastructure Finance Authority Board uh, considered our applications, which is uh, combined $4.48 million or $1.12 million uh, per each district. Uh, and they approved that, which is great news. Uh, so we had been waiting for uh, some additional activity and getting the draft contracts in from Business Oregon. Just a couple of weeks ago, we received those and um, we'll be doing a review um, and I'm sure we'll We'll get a copy over the SDIC's version over to Mr. Sheets, um, and then uh, we will have some additional conversations. I just want to talk through about uh, what is exactly in these agreements and uh, what some of the next steps are for PMLS and answer any questions. So Business Oregon uh, did ask for uh, a complete request for the phase. The phase is a three and a half year phase, um, and so they did not uh, want us to split it up in a two-year segment, uh, which the resolutions that the boards passed in February um, approved that funding, or at least directed uh, a, a one-year appropriation for the first year of that and uh, considered the second year um, through a cost-sharing IGA to be developed. Um, so Business Oregon asked for what the complete non-federal sponsor um, contribution for the whole PED phase would be. And so that was included in the request. Of course, it's up to um, the annual appropriations. Uh, that amount was approved on the Army Corps of Engineers side of things. Uh, we are currently waiting for both uh, authorization and appropriations. We are in a very good place in both, uh, being in both the House and the Senate versions of the Water, Water Resources Development Act, uh, which would give us construction authorization for our project, um, which would basically be the congressional authorization and commitment um, to complete the project. And we also are in both the Senate and the House um, federal budgets uh, and also we're in the president's budget uh, for the annual appropriations to pay for um, the first year of the head phase. Uh, we will need to seek annual appropriations for this, but once you get that first uh, appropriation, it usually is a good sign uh, that there is appetite to continue working on it, especially if you have that authorization. 
Uh, there is no, uh, if you've been following along at home, there is no approved federal budget right now, even though the federal fiscal year begins on October 1st. They uh, have a continuing resolution that goes into mid-December. Uh, in years past, that has been extended uh, through continuing resolutions. I think the current fis federal fiscal year was approved in March of this current year. So we are in a little bit of a holding pattern as far as when the um, appropriations would come. As soon as we receive that funding or different funding, uh, the Corps will start working with us to draft that design agreement for the three and a half year phase. Um, so we're still uh, very optimistic that this spring uh, we'll be entering into that design phase. Um, these contracts through Business Oregon will provide 80% of what uh, SDIC's uh, match requirements are. And the 20%, at least for the first year, is uh, in your approved and adopted budgets. So uh, things to come. Um, we will need three documents. Uh, we'll need to uh, open up the currently approved resolution and make sure that it syncs up with what the, the contract documents have um, and hopefully have a conversation about uh, extending a cost sharing IGA that needs to be drafted um, beyond the first two years and have it as the full head phase. Um, but we'll have some conversations with the board and make sure um, we work through that with you. And then we'll also need to have a resolution to approve signing of the contracts um, with Business Oregon. Uh, Hong, am I missing any other details there? No, the resolution to approve the contract and resolution to approve uh, a forthcoming cost sharing IGA. I think the, the key here for SDIC is the grant um, contract with Business Oregon, the language is, um, I would, uh, and Colin can uh, provide more input on this, is pretty much uh, non-negotiable with Business Oregon. If, if there are uh, some language changes, it would have to go back through the Oregon Department of, of Justice, which will take some time. And so the terms that are in this Business Oregon grant um, are, are really what we need to consider accepting with, with minimal changes. And I'll be working, sending those over to, to Brian with ample time for him to review. Um, so the, um, the key, I think, for this district is whether Business Oregon's request for the full 3.5 years uh, of the PED phase, uh, a commitment to that is feasible or not subject to your annual appropriation and budgeting, of course. And one other point um, before opening up to questions, just on timing. Uh, so uh, noted that most likely we won't be beginning that PED phase um, until sometime in the spring. Uh, and as far as the Business Oregon, the contracts, uh, we'll have some discussions in December board meetings, but looking to have those uh, contracts signed uh, aiming for January. Uh, I think that would give us plenty of time for discussion and review um, and also to get them back over to Business Oregon so we'd be ready for uh, any negotiation of the design agreement. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions you might have. Um, I Hey, this is Brian. I don't have any uh, questions per se, but I just want to say thanks for explaining uh, the realities of those terms from uh, Business Oregon so uh, we can understand exactly what we're getting into. And I'll definitely be taking a look at that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Colin, in, in preparation for today's discussion, I went back you know, and read the uh, IGA that we entered into on the cost sharing. Uh, it included an attachment from Mark's 2022 January letter, kind of explaining the option A or option B. And we're doing the option A, of course. And there are some uh, statements in there that this is a two year IGA uh, predicated that, you know, the assumption was is the dissolution would occur in May 2024. Uh, does that? change do we need to amend that or are we still on track for a dissolution in may 2024 uh i'm also just wondering how does 
how does SDIC, I think we're later on the design phase. I don't know what your SDIC's design work or our payments will be needed. So I just, it's more around if the dissolution doesn't happen, how does SDIC ensure our PED work is completed? You know, if we're still four districts, we just wanted to make sure our work gets covered. Uh, so, because I, I, I read in the letter, it's like, hey, we're going to be dissolved by in two years. And I'm just not, I just want to make sure there's a plan B. So, that's a great question. So, um, and I think, I think that partially Business Oregon, um, doesn't want to, or, or at least said that they don't like to split single phases into two funding requests. But uh, what you'll see in the current contract is supports the full three and a half years of PED. Um, and so there, that basically is a backstop that allows the option, if dissolution doesn't happen in May of 2024, uh, that there is an option to continue in PED and have Business Oregon pay for 80% of that. Um, so that is in there. We are still uh, moving toward the, um, the goal of the May 2024 dissolution. And so there is the ability um, to, with this, with the three and a half year term, basically the full PED phase terms, um, we are able to hand that baton off over to the urban district so that they can continue as a non-federal sponsor and tap into those business Oregon funds. Um, and I believe there was one other question that maybe um, I missed. It was around, so if the plan B, if the dissolution doesn't happen, how does SDIC ensure our PED work is covered in the 5.6 million? You know, that was the number presented to cover all of the PED costs and the grant funds and then the, the five five percent share contributions from the, the four districts. Yep. Uh, if we're the last design to occur, I just want to make sure that our work is still covered with uh, the five within the five point six million. And, and just a note on the, the design is all happening together. Uh, there is sequencing or phasing for the construction. Um, so the the design is sort of, there's a lot of design that will be happening at the same time. So it's not last to go, first to go sort of things. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we needed to have it with the equal share, um, because the core isn't dividing it by district. Um, the contract will allow for SDIC to be able to tap into those state dollars all the way through the end of PED. So if if dissolution doesn't happen in year three or year four, um, SDIC, uh, based on your board and your uh, annual appropriation, you'll be able to tap into those funds. Uh, you would have to continue funding the 20% match of that. La another question, Colin. I'm not seeing other board members. So. As we move into this PED phase, what's your thought as far as reporting out to the four districts on, uh, you know, project cost, cost and schedule? You know, it's we have a target of 5.6 that included a 25% contingency, and you know we're we're facing you know inflation. I just want to make sure you know that number is uh, achieved. Uh, so. What's your thoughts on how, how do you see, you know, Lori's team supporting the project team to kind of report back where we're at on budget uh, schedule? That's a great question. Before doing that, I also wanted to note that as far as the four years of um, funding, 70% of that is in the first two years. So, and that's in the schedule that Mark included. So years three and year four are 30%. So it's a much smaller non-federal uh, contribution or a cost share. As far as reporting those numbers, we're going to learn a lot more in scoping the actual PED agreement um, where we'll lock in some of those costs. There, there will be uh, annual adjustments. We'll be working, uh, and, and Mark, as the project manager for PMLS, will be working very closely um, with the core team and with our finance team uh, to make sure that uh, everything is synced up. Um, and we have uh, Angel uh, on the 
on our finance team is uh, going to be helping manage all of the work with Business Oregon as far as the disbursements and all the requests. Um, so we'll have that direct connection with the finance team. Um, Mark will be working uh, with the board, with uh, finance team, and with the core uh, as we have uh, the cost update. So I, I think you're you're right that there's going to, you know, the exact number will change. There is a pretty healthy contingency that was built into those numbers. Um, and so we'll need to report um, as we learn more. Mark, is there anything you want to uh, add related to that? Hi, Colin. Thanks. Um, yeah, no, like, like you said, we're going to find out a little bit more about how the, how the, um, head contract will be administered and whether we'll see cost overruns, like whether those will be sort of um, reconciled every year or whether they'll be pushed out um, towards the end of PED um, and realized later um, in summary. But I also, um, I will just point out, we've we've always said that the, what we've seen so far is a PED estimate and um, certainly with the um, inflationary situation that we're in. Um, we can expect that um, when the core gets down and line items all their subtasks for the for the PED process, um, that they'll they'll be able to really capture some of those projected inflationary cost increases. And we may adjust scope a little bit, but we'll have a refined estimate. The current PED estimate is basically just a multiplier of the construction costs. So we'll um, we'll get into the weeds when we Put together the design agreement to um, to get a more accurate estimate um, so that we're aware of what's coming at us in the future. And Chair Hansel, I feel highly comfortable committing to an update on these costs every time we meet with you all. And if you want them more frequently, if we're not meeting with you regularly, we can certainly provide them. So um, it, it seems like a really good idea for us to be keeping all of our boards informed of these costs as we develop them. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, thank you all. You know, it, it's a, it, this is our number one priority, you know, accreditation, it's getting us down that path. It's not to the finish line, but we're moving forward and uh, just making sure SDIC has the finances to support this work is, is uh, paramount. So uh, knowing early if we're going to be on target or, you know, needing additional funds and understanding, you know, where we're at would be appreciated just so we can be thoughtful in our budget planning. Uh, Colin, the one piece I didn't hear is the IGA really, the two year, you know, two years that kind of said we're gonna be in this thing for two years. So year three and four, is that just kind of, will that have to be an amendment to the IGA? The, or I guess Hong can speak to this. Um... Yeah, I, I was going to say, first of all, there isn't an idea yet. There is just a resolution, Tom, to acknowledge okay. that there's yeah, a potential for contribution of year one and year two. Um, the IGA will will uh, memorialize that and put that in, in, in um, commitment terms of year one and year two. And I think it should include the contingency for year three and year four if this solution does not occur as, as planned. And right. we can we can discuss among the boards what those contingencies are. I would I'm very interested in in uh, talking to Brian about what his thoughts are with respect to that plan because I think it'll be very important. Yeah, I don't. I I mean I, I think that they, we can definitely draft something there. And then I think the only mm -hmm. th uh, the only question would be uh, how amenable Business Oregon would be to uh, successors and in interest or. Uh, those kinds of discussions. So, I mean, obviously they'll have questions about uh, ability to match and those kinds of things. So I think it's, I think we can definitely put on our best uh, face and put those suggestions forward. It, I think it, the uh, question would be how, how receptive Business Oregon will be. So that's, that's my thoughts on that. It's a great question. Cause we, we talked to, with, we talked with Colin about that yesterday and we'll make sure to get some, some sort of, um, uh, consensus or agreement from them on that. I'm not concerned on our end because there's a statutory merger uh, in ORS 550 that's going to have all of the assets and in, uh, including this contract with uh, Business Oregon go up to the urban district. It's more of, um, there's, there's another legal issue, uh, but we will be working with the Oregon business to 
to figure that out and, and I'll be sharing with you, Brian, um, as we learn more about it. Great, thank you. Other questions for Colin and the team? Colin, everybody, thank you so much for the update. Lori, it looks like you're up. Mr. Chair, if I may just offer some introductory remarks. Sure. Um, I have a lot of regret that we're having this conversation with you, and I want you to know that I feel really accountable to this board for some mistakes that were made in the budgets. And I just wanted to say to you all that um, it's my commitment and certainly Lori's commitment that when we discover things that are challenging or off, we're going to bring them to you. Um, and I'm really thankful for Lori and the whole finance team for flushing out some of these challenges that we're going to talk to you about. But at the end of the day, I want you to hear me say, and I'll say this to MCDD, this is on me. And um, there's a lot of reasons. But at the end of the day, I'm accountable to this board for these mistakes. We're doing a deep dive into the, all the procedures and processes and actions that we took to develop these budgets to understand where um, my oversight was lacking. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that I feel really accountable to you all for this. And I'm really grateful for our finance team for um, finding these changes that need to be made and elevating them to your attention. So thanks to Lori and the whole finance team. And again, my regrets that we're having to take your time to adjust these budgets. Um, and I want you to know that I feel fully accountable to you all for uh, the errors that were made that caused us to be here today. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions, um, but per contract, this is on me and the staff has been excellent trying to identify what we need to do to make things uh, absolutely right. So um, that's the end of my introductory remarks. Thank you, Jim. So if there aren't any questions yet, I'll get started. Um, and I'm just gonna say a couple of things as well. This is not normal for us to be um, taking a look at changes to your budget in this manner, but we did feel like um, the changes that we identified were really critical and important for the board to be aware of, which is why we're bringing this to your attention. Um, this is really groundwork that we're doing in relation to the upcoming budget process. And I know hard to believe we're only five months into the fiscal year, but we're looking forward to our next budget process. So you'll see us come back um, in front of you in January with a revised forecast that really will help us to project where we think we're going to land for the year. So these corrections and adjustments are really kind of setting the groundwork for that and allowing us to um, have the right starting point for those projections so that we can talk to you about um, where we think we're going to land. So with that, I'm going to pull up my screen so that you can share in what I am talking about. All right, so in your packet today, we have both this schedule and a memo providing the information about some budget corrections that we've identified in relation to this current year budget for 22-23. Um, you'll see here that the first column is the budget that you adopted in June of 2022. Um, the most significant adjustment that you're gonna see here is in column labeled number one, where it says we're correcting the fund balance. So we've done some review of the calculations of the beginning fund balance and identified that the beginning fund balance was overstated in the budget. So um, your budget that was adopted actually was $226,000 overstated. So that actually flows through, if you watch this column, that flows through to the ending fund balance as well. So the ending fund balance will be lower by that $226,000 as well. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that when I get through the next adjustment so that we can talk about what that really means. So in column two, we also have identified some corrections to the JCA budget. And in those corrections, we're modifying the um, IGA between all of the supporting districts and the JCA, reducing the amount that they need to pay to the JCA this year for those expenditures that we fund on the JCA side. So um, JCA will be considering um, the amendment to that IGA and that 
results in a $33,000 reduction in funding that SDIC needs to provide to JCA for the current year. So that offsets that beginning um, under, overstatement of fund balance and helps us along a little bit and puts us in a little bit better position than if we hadn't have found those corrections. I think the key here for us and what we wanted you to be aware of as a board is that you know, we started with $226,000 less money than what you thought in the budget, and we're ending with about $191,000 less money than where we thought we were going to end. So that whether that ends up falling in capital reserve or whether that ends up following, falling in our operation funds, which is the undesignated and the operating reserves, um, is yet to be seen as we do those projections in January. But the, the real story here is that you're going into the upcoming budget year with about $200,000 less than what we originally budgeted for. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, we felt like it was enough money and a critical enough issue for you that we did wanna bring that to your attention. Um, we are requesting that you approve a motion to um, make these corrections to your budget so that we're starting in the right place and really um, all aware of where we're where we should have landed in the budget process. Um, but I can take any questions at this point if you have any about the changes that we've identified. Oh gosh, the room is silent. All right. Well, with that, um, I'll hand it back over to you, Tom. All right. So Lori's asked for a motion to support changes to our budget. Uh, do I hear one? Um, I'll go ahead and and, uh, and motion that. Um, this is a, a tough pill to swallow, but I understand it and have spent some time working with Lori on it. And um, I also don't think it puts us into a terribly bad position at this point. Um, so with that, if, um, I move to approve the budget adjustment for fiscal year 2022-23 as documented in attachment one. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Tammy? Uh, yes. Annalise? Yes. Ken? Uh, yes. And Tom Hansel, yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Lori. We'll report out once we finish sort of our forensics um, and share with you any process improvements that we plan to implement. Again, my regrets for the errors. You know, your end estimates are as good as the data you, you receive. And uh, sometimes you make some payments you weren't anticipating or uh, any number of things, but uh, any forensics would be appreciated. Yeah. I would like not to be in this situation next year. Let's be real honest with you about it. Let's see, I think we're on to item uh, E, any new business. Is that right, Wendy? Correct, and just an opportunity to ask any questions about the informational items in your packet. I'll open up to the board. So I just have one inquiry. Lori, I think at the last meeting you talked about you were going to be coming back to the uh, boards to start talking about kind of some financial disclosure. I know like uh, good financial operations board organizations, you know, we're, we're empowering uh, the MCDD to be our contractor and manage our finances. Uh, my interest is kind of make sure we, we receive, you know, periodic uh, disclosures, you know, a little bit more detail than what we're seeing today, you know, quarterly review, you know, some of us might be interested in more transactional 
and I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to put work on you, but it's more of a, a discussion. And maybe when you come meet with us, I don't know the flexibility of your financial system. If you're just going to post something to the, you know, the SDIC web website, or you know, just I just want to have that discussion. And I'm not sure when we meet if that's the time, or if you would like to kind of do a survey and just kind of see what the board members are wanting. Uh, you know, our budget's growing and it's just kind of, you know, as a board member, I just want to make sure we're informed enough to, to understand where our monies are being spent. Uh, and there's so many contractual obligations we have. I understand that, but it's just kind of uh, disclosure. So. Sure. Um, happy to have some further conversation about that. Um, right now you are receiving monthly financial report. If you are interested in having a presentation of that financial information at your board meetings, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, if that is not enough detail, we're, we're happy to take a look at that for you as well. I will say the system is um, relatively manual. And so things can be a little bit challenging to um, identify data, but um, we certainly are here to support you and make sure that you are getting the information you need to be confident in the work that we're doing. I'll say that um, we have a great team. I think Janet and her group really have a good handle on the activity, the things that I've seen them doing, and um, certainly the results of the audits um, support that as well. But we want to be as transparent as possible and provide you with the information that you need to, to um, feel confident in what we're doing. So I'm, I'm happy to work with you all if we want to do that in a work session format or however we want to work that out to, to make sure that we are getting for you the information that you need. I, I appreciate that. So uh, I guess I'll leave it to the rest of the board to maybe speak chime in if they have an interest in having a discussion at a meeting or independently talk with Lori or her team. I'm just I'm just one of four. So I, I don't want to control this discussion by any means. I guess I'll start. I'm always like uh, the more information, the better. And I understand the workload that Lori and her team are under and some of the changes we've tried to make to make that more efficient all the way around. Um, I don't know, you know, I guess my question for Lori would be like, it's like an, an AP detail or something monthly. How difficult would something like that be? Are you um, most interested in what's payable or are you more interested in seeing the checks that were written for the month? Um, either. Because we typically do have pretty quick turnaround when things go through AP, so we do a check register. Okay, yeah, we can provide that. I mean, just even something like that would be very helpful. Sure. Along with the monthly financial. Mm -hmm. If other things occur to y'all, please share. And then we have the regular contract report that you should be seeing in your packet as well. And if you're interested, we can present on that. Um, in some of the other board meetings, we've chosen not to do that to save time, but if you'd like to go into it, we can do that. I would say for me, that's actually, that's a very helpful document to have in the packet. Really appreciate it. Cool. Thank you. You guys deserve to have the information you need. Lori, in the uh, financial reports, first quarter, uh, if I, I don't know if these are, you know, straight line, one twelfth is paid per month. You know, I, I, I glance at these and see some of them are way off. You know, it doesn't look like we're spending anything. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing a footnote, if we're off a variance by, you know, five or 10% of mm -hmm. that where it should be, you know, maybe that's a, you know, like O and M, you know, maintenance cost. I see it's you know barely anything has been paid, but perhaps the crews were out there October, November catching up. Uh, it's just, or is that an assumed new rate of you know out, outlay? Uh, it just it looks odd. So uh, 
Are you looking at the projects on the report or are you looking at the regular maintenance I am, costs? I'm looking at sheet seven of the handout. It's just the SDIC. It's, you know, through 930 end of September. Operating drain system maintenance. We've expended $2,200 of, you know, a $100,000 budget in the first three months. So it's just, that's, that's a great under, you know, that's a great savings, but I, I assume it, there, something's going to catch up, right? It's going to catch up. So there's definitely, when you look at statements early in the year and Janet's got her hand up, so I'll let her step in. Yeah, well, and, that, and that's just, I mean, it just shows it's difficult to see it at this, you know, high level, really what's happening. So, mm -hmm. Tom, I think this is kind of a, um, this is a one time thing that you're going to kind of see that because we're now on a quarterly billing with a fixed fee. And it took us a while to get to that. So we, we probably don't have those numbers into the financial yet for Sandy, because Karen just finished going through and revamping that system. Okay. So I think you'll start seeing it more, but with the fixed fee, we are doing quarterly billings instead of monthly billings. So those charges are gonna lag. Does That's that make sense? Good information, yes. So, <laughs> so as far as, you know, we're a maintenance organization, you know, mm -hmm. so if it'd be helpful to see any performance measures to balance the expenditures, you know, I know Randy's team, has you know objectives to accomplish throughout the year. If it's possible to see any of those metrics that he's accomplished throughout the year, just to kind of keep in check with where the expenditures are going, because I know it's it's going to be quarterly billing, fixed fixed fee, but just knowing the work, you know, the the maintenance been done, right? I don't, I don't know if that's possible or not. Maybe we should add a both a financial components that red, yellow, green or something if we're over or underspent, but maybe we need to add a more operational update so you guys can get that detail about what the activities have been in the district uh, from the operations team, if mm -hmm. that's suitable for you. Thinking out loud here. Yeah, I mean, in the past, Randy would come to our, our meetings periodically and kind of give an update. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm not trying to put work on anybody. It's just if there's systems out there that can push this data out and just to have a dialogue it, it's i think it's just kind of each of the board members probably just knowing hey you know we're we're on pace for getting all the work done uh just and jim that could be part of your report possibly you know i don't need to have airtime here i personally but maybe that's just you know it is the red green yellow maybe it's whatever your organization wants to do, but it, it just kind of is that other half of the coin, right? We pay, but we're doing, you know, one twelve billing or three, four quarter billing. It's just did the work get done? That that's just kind of the assurance of yay, yay, you know, we're on our way. I, that, I appreciate how you're raising this. I think it's thoughtful. So uh, let us let us reconnoiter a little bit and figure out what we can do initially, and then based on what we do, if let, let's keep working at it so that you get what you need. It's a, it, it's not an unreasonable request. Um, it, it will be easier for us in the future when we have better systems, but um, I think we can, I, I appreciate that you're giving us some space to do what we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ken? I just <clears throat> add, I think uh, everyone covered what I was gonna say, but what would be helpful is uh, as we're moving into what looks like a probably a, a recession and attempts at uh, trying to reduce inflation, but that, that's still a little bit long ways out. It'd be good if you're just give us heads up if your assumptions change in budgeting and if you're seeing trend lines uh, that might uh, either reduce or increase our, our budgetary numbers um, in the future. And that just goes across all the really all the districts. Uh, I think uh, also it can help us as public agency, those that are in public agencies to understand what trends other other governments are seeing and we can pass that along to our own, own folks out there. So it's the only comment I had. No, it's helpful that to have you guys good. understand that stuff so you can help be ambassadors to all the folks you know and talk with. 
Yeah, and we can will definitely be um, continuing this discussion as we move into the budget process as well. So as I said, in January, we'll be bringing you some projections for where we think we're going to end the year, which will include that kind of capital and non-capital project work that's being done so that you can see and we can talk about any variations we may be seeing in pricing at that point as well. So you'll definitely be seeing that information regularly as we move into the budget because we need your support on the decision making around what we do um, for the upcoming budgets as well. So, um, but we'll take a look at the financial data to make sure that we um, can provide you that additional information you're looking for. And um, I'll work with Randy and make sure that we can get some information on the operational side too, so that we've got all of the information you need to, to kind of look at what's happening. And Lori, is all our debt fixed rate? There's no variable in that Correct. debt? Correct. Okay. Great. And then we'll, uh, we can start including the sort of check register in your packet. Absolutely. Good questions, Tom, thank you. Oh, I've got a lot of ideas that, I don't know if they're all good though. <laughs> so I appreciate that you went back and read the IGA and Tammy that you reached out to Lori. It's really great to have you guys actually investing time. Thank you. It, it's really meaningful. It helps. Anything else for new business? Jim, you have any uh, comment? Oh, Tammy, go ahead. Um, I have one. So the 40 mile loop, um, we recently did an IGA. I think Metro was involved, Troutdale, and I think even the port to extend the 40 mile loop up through Troutdale. And I'm bringing this up because it's on the levy, but I recently received testimony planning commission last week that it's affecting the runway approaches at the airport. And that a couple of runway approaches would be closed because the, the 40 mile loop is gonna be running on the levee. And actually I gotta tell you, I don't get it because there's Graham Road between the airport and the levee. So I don't really know how one would affect the other, but um, I- Yeah, any were those citizens? This, pardon me? Were those citizen pilots testify? Uh, yes. Um, it shouldn't because it's the routing of it goes uh, down along the lower level of as a Sandy River bank there. There's an existing kind of informal trail. It goes there and it doesn't displace the RPZ. So that I'm aware of. I'm the project sponsor from the port. Um, but they may be misinformed. And I would say that have them reach out to you know, not me, but Robin McCaffrey in the port, and I can give you that con. Okay, that, that'd, uh, that'd be great. Yeah, because in the city's always been a big proponent of the airport, you know, and when they hear something's going on at the airport, they're everybody's on high alert. And, you know, I don't want it to become a 38 mile loop trail or anything, you know, so if we could work this out, it'd be great. Yeah, yeah, happy to happy to have somebody address that with them because I, th I think that's just a, a rumor. Okay. Thanks, Ken. And did somebody else have something before I went with another one? Go ahead, me again. Okay, I just wanted to mention that um, urban flood safety and you saw Jim's update, but we've actually got now some of the financial modeling, the revenue. Um, we're starting to get that in. And um, so the next thing that we'll be looking at is, you know, what's the impact gonna be on some of the SDIC landowners? And uh, that'll be real helpful information. So as soon as we know that, um, we will be talking about that as a board. But uh, it's a lot of information coming at us real quick. So we're digesting it as fast as we can. There should be at least a couple of months of more digestion time before we push you to decisions. But, um, and I think Wendy, you're gonna send that information out to all the legacy boards, is that correct? So you all have it. I, I certainly can. That would be great. Why not? 
any questions while I'm up here? No? Okay. Danny, I just want to thank you again uh, for your uh, role on the urban board as the SDIC representative. I know uh, Ken is also there. Uh, it, it's a Herculean uh, effort to uh, absorb so much information and process. Uh, again, I just want to show my appreciation. Now, I, I've been actually listening in to some of the sessions just to keep abreast of the, uh, how significant these topics are. Uh, so again, thank you for your service there. Thanks, Tom. It's getting into the fun part where we get data. <laughs> All of this is initial at this point. We're uh, looking forward to getting more feedback and conversation with the board. It is interesting if any of you have any brilliant facilitation tips for a 17 member board. I'm, I'm, I'm receiving those, so um, please let me know. I think ultimately we're going to be probably needing to move into more of a legislative format where we're we're doing more markup type of thing on a on a staff proposal, and so we're we're kind of iterating towards that. We'll have more discussions with the urban board on how to move in that direction. Just to we're not going to get a consensus out of these 17 people, and that's probably a good thing. Jim, I'm going to adjourn unless you have any other. Uh... Uh, final words for the uh, the meeting? No, I guess the one thing I would share, and this doesn't necessarily directly impact SDIC, uh, Bill and Randy and, and some of us have been reflecting on the sort of state of uh, the homeless situation from a year ago to today. And I guess what I would point out to you, if you haven't been out in the floodplain, um, if you go look at the cross levy or you go look at pump station four and you look at Schmier Road, um, we have a lot of work to do and there's still a significant challenge, but things are appreciably better than they were a year ago. Um, I hope we can hang on to those gains, um, but I just, uh, it's really hard not to reflect that about a year ago, we had just had the Veterans Day flooding and it was a very different set of work that we had to do last year than this year. So I, I wanna thank Bill and Aster and Evan and the Port and Metro and um, everybody who's been involved in, in really trying to turn that situation around. It's been an awful lot of work and, and still a long way to go, but the good news is Pump Station 4 is up and operational and, um, and that's a really good thing. So thanks to everybody who has contributed to that effort. Well, and a big thanks to everyone that contributed with the atmospheric river, all the precipitation we received after months of not getting very much, you know, being on guard and and operating the system and you know you know making it sure it works so appreciate that when that trip wetland complex was real handy <laughs> it's doing what it was designed for yeah really nice to be able to close that weir so yep seeing no further comments uh Let's go ahead and adjourn the November 15th SDIC board meeting. Uh, thank you, everybody. Great seeing all your faces. Thank you, Tom.